This project demonstrates how to build a simple SQS service on AWS. It implements a lightweight SSH key generation service where users submit requests through an API, jobs are queued in SQS, processed by a Lambda container, and the resulting key pairs are stored and retrieved from a DynamoDB table. To test our service, we'll deploy a simple web application hosted in a public S3 bucket. This front end calls our API gateway endpoints to submit key generation requests and displays the results directly in the browser. We'll start by creating an SQS input queue that receives incoming key generation requests. A UUID is generated for each request. Next, we'll create an ECR repository and build our key processing container with Docker. This handles the actual key generation logic. We'll configure a Lambda function associated with our SQS queue. SQS automatically invokes our container for each new message posted to the queue. When a message is processed by the container, the result is placed in the DynamoDB results table, which is indexed by the request UUID. An API gateway is then provisioned to interact with our SQS-based services. It exposes two endpoints, key gen and results. Both endpoints are backed by Lambda functions. The API workflow looks like this. A user submits a key generation request to the key gen endpoint. The job is queued in SQS, processed by the Lambda container, and the results are stored in DynamoDB for retrieval through the results endpoint. For testing, we provision a public S3 bucket and deploy a simple web page that lets us interact with our service. The web application is pretty straightforward. You select the key type, then you click generate, and you can watch the API handle the entire process from generation to result. Now let's cover the prerequisites for this project. We do have a video out there called AWS and Terraform Easy Setup. I'll put a link at the top to that. That walks you through how you need to create an IAM user and extract the secret and access key in the AWS console that you'll need for Terraform builds and CLI access. So what you'll need is that AWS account with that uh, secret and access key for everything. Then you'll need to have the AWS CLI installed, you need to have Terraform installed, and you need Docker installed so we can build our key processing container. Okay, now we are ready to build the project. The first thing we want to do is go to the documentation and grab this git home clone command. Copy that and then bring up your de development environment, paste that in, and that is going to pull the code down and put you in the, the right directory. Now the first thing we want to do with all the projects is we're going to run check env and check env is going to go verify all those requirements that we listed below are installed and found in a path and also make sure that your access and secret key work by logging into AWS with the AWS CLI. So at this point, we are ready to do the build. So we'll do apply. Now the builds here are incredibly fast. Uh, there's no EC2s, there's no networking. So it takes approximately three minutes. If you have any questions about this uh, build, please put it down in the comment section. Okay, the build has completed, so let's bring up the AWS console and let's take a look at what got built. The first thing you'll notice when you open the console and start looking at things is there's no EC2s in this project and there's no networking. This is effectively a full serverless solution using AWS cloud native services. The first thing we're going to look at is the SQS queue, the input queue. So click on that. And you can see if we go look at uh, it's, it's sort of a standard queue and we have a Lambda trigger defined. The Lambda trigger is there our Docker container that we built. And we in the build, we use Docker and we push that into our Elastic Container Registry instance. So let's go look at that. We've got an SSH key gen um, ECR instance. So we'll click on that. We've got the one instance. It's, it's pretty small relative speaking. And this is the container that is called and executed every time there is a new message added to the queue. So this is the the sort of the, the guts of the service. It's what takes that message, extracts the, or gets the SSH key, generates the results, and puts it in the next part, which is the DynamoDB table. So the container writes into this results table. So we'll click on that. Well, it has one partition key, which is the UUID. When we create a new request in the API, we're going to generate a UUID for the request so we can figure out how to pull it out of this table from the results endpoint. So we've got the correlation ID. That's the UUID that will sit there. So if I do explore items, 
You can see I, I've done a little bit of testing before I did this. You can see different requests. They're defined to have a TTL of, I believe, a day, but you can adjust that. So this this message will expire whatever by whatever seconds that are in the TTL. So that's a feature of Dynamo, and it's sort of making it transient. Otherwise, your service will just kind of build up with anything. And if it's just a service result, you can let it set to um, whatever time period you want. Next, we have the API gateway that we create. We create a HTTP protocol gateway, and we'll click on that, and there are two endpoints. We've got post and get. So post is where we will say, hey, give me a key, and there is a payload associated with it that tells it what type of key. Is it RSA or is the other one, and what's the, what's the size? It will also, as a part of it, generate that UUID and stick it on the message queue. Then that processor we just talked about will process it, and it's going to stick it on the Dynamo table, and then you'll use the result endpoint to pull it, to say, am I done yet? Am I done yet? I'm done yet. And then you'll get the results after it, the SQS processor has run. So those are the two parts. You've got the, the post, and then it waits on the get. Next, we'll take a look at the lambdas that are created. We've got two standard uh, lambdas that are using Python. So you can go into the console. This is the git is associated with the API uh, results endpoint. You can actually see the code directly in the console. We, we built it through Terraform. We zip it up and we put it in there, but it goes through and gets the result table. You pass in the ID. It pulls, uh, it returns back whether it's completed or failed. So that's, you know, you can see all the code in here. Contrast that with, if we go back to the functions, we also have a Lambda that's based on a container and has a package type of image. And click on that, it comes back and says, hey, dude, I, I, I don't know how to do this. You're in a container. Uh, you can test it. You can see where it's hooked up to with a trigger. Okay, the last thing we're going to build is the S3 bucket. And this contains a very simple web application. It's it's pretty basic uh, JavaScript code that's going to call two endpoints. It's going to post the request with the options. It's going to sit there, pull, and then produce the results. Now let's the demo the service using the test application. So what the first thing I'm going to do is from the build output, you're going to see the website URL. This is the test web application. So you copy that and bring up your uh, a browser, put it in there, and it's gonna come through and show you, okay, here's the generation API. You've got three options, the RSA 4096, 248, and then the ed one. So what you wanna do is pick your type and hit generate. And if you watch carefully, a request ID waiting, and then it will pull. So let's take a little bit underneath the hood. And I could do that for other types too. It's gonna sit there, it's gonna post, Wait, what I can do is bring up the debugger for this and let's go to networking and you'll get sort of an idea. Well, first let's go to the elements here and you can see if I go to script, this is the handler. Step one, post key gen. It's gonna call my, um, my key gen API from my um, <clears throat> API gateway. Then it's gonna pull the results. It waits for 20 and sleeps, I guess, uh, 1.5 seconds. So this should be relatively quick. And it's going to fetch the result endpoint with the UID that's passed for the request. So if I go to uh, networking here, as you hit each request, you can watch that sequence that we just you hit generate key pair. It's going to iterate the ID. It's going to do the response. Then it's going to uh, poll pending, 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 and then key pair ready. So you can see it, it's doing the post and then it's waiting for the results. It's totally asynchronous and all being done by that SSH key processor container on the back end. At this point, we've done everything we're going to do with this project. So what you want to do, first off, it's dirt cheap because it's all serverless. So it's like pennies to run this project. But in general, you want to be a good steward of your cloud account. So you want to go back to the development environment and let's do destroy. And that will delete everything associated with this project.